Okay, folks, first things first, I want to give a big shout out to one of my Kickstarter backers, Raymond Lee, who requested this run through. Raymond, I hope you enjoyed it. What team? Were you on Team Dragon or Team Dwarf? Hopefully you were satisfied with the run through. And now let's get to those final thoughts. Hey, everybody. Final thoughts time for Draco or Draco, if you prefer. I'm still not quite certain, but either way, this is a very fun, very fast tactical skirmish filler. I mean, this is a game that once you get it down, you're going to finish it in 10 minutes easily, 15 at the most. And quite frankly, I mean, you know, since it's so asymmetric, one side, you know, if you beat me with the uh, dwarves, I'm going to say, hey, let's switch sides. Now I'll be the dwarves and try to beat you because it's just so quick. And a full game you would almost think of as playing two sessions back to back so both players can play both sides. Although as it happens, Jen and I, when we have played it, she always wants to be the dragon. Because, I don't know, she just feels an affinity for him. Um, and, you know, so that means I'm almost always the dwarves, which is odd for me because I generally tend not to want, I'd rather be the defender, the guy who's, um, you know, trying just to survive and stay alive. And, you know, it works really well. It is probably a little bit more aggressive and in-your-face than the normal type of thing Jen and I enjoy, but it's so quick and it's so charming. It's so well put together. And the decisions can be very tense. They're never tough. It's not like these are really heavy, brain-burning weight. Let me figure out 15 different variables uh, that have to go into this particular decision, but they are still tense decisions because, right, okay, I could stretch myself thin now and really go for the jugular, but that could really leave me wide open and, you know, hurting, uh, if, you know, depending on if they've got the right cards in their hand. What do I think the chances are? Well, I can check their discard pile. Wow. I mean, they've all, I think, if I recall correctly, I think the dwarves have like 15 shields and the dragon only has 10 or something like that. And, you know, so I check and, wow, the dragon's already been through seven of their shields. Chances are they don't have much defense anymore. Maybe now I should go all in. Maybe this is when I should use my fury. Um, but my, 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 um, my net guy is almost dead. If I leave him up there, he, I might lose him and then the dragon can get away and, you know, they, and then we might run out of time. It, these are simple, fun, quick decisions for a quick 10 minute game on a super tiny board as players just move counter move over the course of a very quick session and somebody wins very very quickly it works it's nice it's interesting as well. Originally, I had read that the designer Adam Kaluza had plans for expansions, where, I mean, he mentioned in one thread that, uh, you know, there's going to be another expansion that was going to not um, put in more dwarves or dragons, but different factions, like there's going to be an ogre. So, oh, it could be dragon versus ogre, or dwarves versus ogre, or, you know, you know and so there's going to be that. It's a shame, because this is a really nice little system. The cards work great. It's very straightforward to come up with very different feeling characters. These dwarves, the, the game they're playing is so radically different from the game that the dragon is playing, even though they all use the same rules. So it's a very simple and easy game to teach. And I don't know, in my experience, it feels relatively balanced. Uh, I'm certainly not an expert in any way, shape, or form. You know, the dwarves are up against the wall with the timer, but their deck is is demonstrably stronger and you know they've got more defense. So anything that this guy could throw at them, if as long as the dwarf player is smart, and doesn't overextend themselves, they'll do okay. Same is true for the dragon, though. What can I say? It works. It's probably a little bit meaner, uh, a bit more aggressive in your face than Jen and I care for, but if we did like this kind of game, it's a really excellent, and another also really great, a lot of people have great experience playing this with their kids because it's so simple. Okay, I've got four cards. What do I gotta do? Do I draw some more? Do I play these? And it's really only if, if you know for two adults or you know two gamers, I should say, you could definitely have a more gamery game just because you start paying attention to right. What have you played? What have you not played? What is the statistical likelihood that you've still got your you, you've got one more level three dragon attack? Do you have it? Because I can survive a level two even though I'm run out of shields and I'm going to charge you. But if you have that three, do you still have it? What's the likelihood when you have that many cards left and you you know? All that stuff can come in too once you learn the deck and you can start thinking about probabilities if you want to play it at a higher level. Although even still, at that point, it's still a light game. And that's Draco, folks. Questions, comments, concerns, as always let me know. Otherwise, I hope you have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.